Hello community! Let's have a look at prompt engineering. I was asked for some complex prompt to generate agents. Well, it is easy. You can do whatever you like. Look, here's one of my old prompts. I say, hey, GPT-4, your role, let's make it a little bit bigger, is of a central intelligence to find solutions for a given task by the user. Then I have asked user for a specific task. You can create and define specific expert agents with the clear intention to provide solution to the user based on the ask question to identify the goal of the user. After the user input, you as central intelligence will create in the next step three different expert agents. Each expert agent with a specific knowledge and know-how to actively solve the given task as specified by the user. You see, I just write the way I think about it. There's nothing complex to it. We continue. Each agent will introduce itself to the user with its name, its specific agent competences, and its tools it can apply to find a solution to the given task. And then I have the output of GPT-4, output three agents which introduce themselves to the user. Easy. The user will choose one expert agent and can add some competencies or solution ideas to the expert agent. Now, next step is clear. So you say, okay, great. Or if the input is now a specific word like go or whatever you like, you as a central intelligence decides on the most fitting expert agent and then initialize the task specific expert agent. So now we have created here a specific agent by our central intelligence given my specific problem and the solution that I'm looking for. Now the next step is you as central intelligence and the set of experts that work together support the user with a step-by-step -step analysis to solve the task and even present a logic reasoning why a particular solution has been chosen. And then you output step-by-step -step solution and interaction. Now if during the task the need for another expert agent arises, create the next expert agent. So we have multi-agent scenarios. The agents need to work together and transfer the data and results between them. We want to have them in an interactive solution. Then next step, since we have catastrophic forgetting with our system, or if you go to ChatGPT or smaller GPT systems, I say, hey, just summarize the current state of interaction and paths chosen to combat forgetting. Every four steps are executed. Now start with the process and ask the user for his first input. This is what I said, and here comes now GPT-4 in my case, or if you like you can go with GPT 3.5 Turbo or whatever you have, comes back and says, hello user, I'm here to assist you in your task. To begin, please provide me with a specific task or problem you would like to address. This will help me define the best expert agents to assist you further. And here now I have here user input awaited. And this is a clear command now for me as a human. Okay, I type now, hey, I need help with some exploratory data analysis of some project data in a CSV file. And now if we want here in this simple example, now have an agent coming up and helping to solve here the task at hand, our CI says understood. So this is if you want the system intelligence. Given the nature of the request, I will create three expert agent who can assist you with EDA of the project data in the CSV file. And now, the introduction of three experts, like we said. So we have the name Data Detective, <laughs> the competences and the tools, Panda for data manipulation, Matplotlib and Seaborn for visualization. Then we have a visualization expert with Plotly Interactive Tableau for dashboarding. And then we have a statistical. And now please select one of the expert agents to begin with. You can also add competencies or specific solution ideas for the agent to incorporate in their approach. So GPT-4 tells you really in the way that I wanted that the system interacts with us. So I say, hey, no, I don't like those three agents. I need a data scientist with knowledge of topic clustering. And do you remember that we given here the instruction? 
If during the task the need for another expert agent arises, create the next expert agent. This is what's gonna happen now. So I don't like those three. And GPT-4 or Central Intelligence comes back or whatever, hell, 9000 comes back and says, okay, I have here clustering Cassandra. Uh, her competence is text processing, topic modeling, dimensionality reduction, and cluster visualization. And I think, yeah, yeah, baby, this is what I'm looking for. So the tools, scikit-learn for data pre-processing and clustering, GANs info the uh, topic modeling, TSNAP PSA for dimensionality reduction, and here partly for visualization. Would you like to proceed with clustering Cassandra? And I say, okay, my CSV vocal has a semicolon as a delimiter and contains English text and some numerical information in several columns. Okay, thank you for the additional information. Let's summarize now how we will do this. And now comes the logical reasoning, what we're going to do. So you know now the steps that the system is going to help you go through in the coding. So we have the data loading, load the CSV file with the correct delimiter, inspect the few URLs. We have the text pre-processing, tokenization, vectorization of the text, the preparation for the topic clustering. Then we have the numerical data pre-processing, handling any missing values, outliers, whatever. Then we have the topic clustering on the text data, like LDA to extract the different topics. Then we use here a visualization and we have a descriptive analysis here of the context of the numerical data, averages, distribution, and so on. This is now the outline. And now we have here our special agent, our clustering Cassandra. And she says, hello, I'm excited to dive into your data. Give the information you provided, even the information you provided. I'll begin with the first two steps, load the CSV, and inspecting structure. So we are here exactly at the first point, data loading and inspection. So see the agent, so the sub intelligence or whatever you know, I like to call it, expert agent is now moving into this exact outlined here process chain. So that's great. That's, I, yeah, we are not operating here. We only have the GPT-4 model and not the code interpreter. In the next video, I will show you how the code interpreter can do this and actively solve here everything. But here we are in GPT-4 or GPT-3 or whatever you are. So I want the code, the Python code to code this. So any information I said, yeah, this is the path to my project. I'm working here on Windows. I says, great, I can guide you step by step, or handle the data and conduct analysis. So first we have to load the data. So we create a panel data frame from our CSV file. And you see here is exactly, and here I have a semicolon as a delimiter since I'm operating in Europe. And we do not have here the American notation of delimiter, which is a comma. So has remembered the information I've given, gives me now the text to load the data. Next, we have the textual data, tokenization, stop word removal, stamming, lemmatization, numerical data, everything that we know. Please follow the steps. Once you have executed a step or you run into issue, describe the situation on an aisle exist you 30. So, Oh, now we are back with a central intelligence. <laughs> we have lost Cassandra. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, well, they are both the same. It's no problem at all. But OK, I have to optimize maybe the prompt structure. Now I'm um, inspect the data here, the numerical data, missing values, the characteristic of the data set, handle missing values, text data, pre-processing, my NLTK corpus, numerical data processing, scalar, OK. Please execute the provided code snippet and then go. So we just say copy code, copy code. You copy this into your Python environment and you can execute hopefully this code. I will do this in GPT-4 with code interpreter. So we just can follow along and I don't just have to copy this. So it will all be done by GPT-4. But so you can see, even if you operate here on chat GPT, it gives you the code that you can use done exactly 
So you have the code for each step in the sequence. You have an overview of the complete sequence and you understand how this is going to proceed. And if you watch this video to the end, let's go another step. So I say, hey, where is Cassandra? And Cassandra comes back and says, my apologies for the oversight. I'm here and ready to assist with topic clustering. So since you pre-processed the data, let's move on to the next step. And this is here, our LDA. So we vectorize the data with our TF-IDF vectorizer that we know from Sidekit Learn. We apply here this mechanism. It gives you everything you need. We go here, for example, for five different topic clusters. Then we view the top word for each topic. As you see, it gives you the code. And once you execute the step, you'll have a clear idea. If you like to visualize the topic, let me know we can dive deeper. And we says, and Cassandra is back. Yes, Cassandra is back. So it says, okay, let's move toward visualizing this topic. So what we have, we have here a, a specific Python library installed. Okay, proceed with the LDA results. The visualization will provide you with an intertopic distance map, the topic terms. One thing, let me know. I'd like to proceed with further analysis. Let's say continue. Let's see what the system comes up with. New ideas. Additional analysis to deepen our standing. Optimal number of topics. Yeah, that's nice. Might be beneficial to determine if our initial choice of five topic was optimal. And I have a feeling no way. So we go now with three, five, seven, ten, and fifteen different topic clusters. Let's see what is the best. Analyze distribution of topics across the text. This is interesting. If you like here to deep dive in a particular topic, this is a correction analysis with numerical data. So as you can see, you can go on and on and on and have really an exploratory data analysis here with our specific agent, beautiful clustering Cassandra. And now we've really come to the end of this video. <laughs> and I hope it was a little bit informative and maybe a little bit fun for you.